Hey, welcome back to Map Unit, day three, last day of notes. So our unit today is maps, and our topic is California maps. We're going to look at California maps, though, and how they apply to Earth science, right? So today you're going to know the unique geologic provinces of California, and you'll be able to analyze and interpret California hazard maps. Throughout California, we have maps designed to help, help us... Uh, be aware of the hazards that exist in California. California, and we're lucky. We get a lot of earthquakes and volcanoes and crazy things. And today you'll be able to identify which areas of California are prone to earthquakes, floods, tsunamis, and volcanic eruptions. All right. So once you have your unit and topic in day three of three written down, okay, go ahead and pause this. If not, let's go ahead and move on for your quick write. Considering where we live, what kinds of hazards do we experience here in Sacramento area? Okay. If you lived by the ocean, what kinds of hazards might exist? What part of California, northern or southern, do you think receives the most rainfall? Okay, go ahead and pause this while you do your quick write for five easy points. All right, so California provinces. What is a California province? Well, a province is a space or piece of land in California that has similar geologic features. Like, is it flat, like the valley? Is it got mountains, like the Sierra Nevada mountains? Is it deserts? Okay, so California is subdivided into 11 unique provinces. Okay, they are the coastal range, the mountain range along the coast, essentially. The Klamath Mountains, the Transverse Range, the Cascade Range, where the volcanoes, Shasta, are. Okay, and last in the Great Valley, which is pretty much where we live nearby. The, flat, the big flat area of California, where all the agricultural is. Peninsular Range, okay. The Modak Plateau. This plateau is made up of just lava flows. And then the Sierra Nevada Mountains here. That big Sierra Nevada, those mountains that we love to go snowboarding on, which Lake Tahoe is up in, right? Okay. Then the Basin and Range. And then we got the Mojave Desert, that big stretch of desert in the back there. And then we have the Colorado Desert. Okay. So, what is a California province for your notes? So, question goes on the left-hand side, answer goes on the right-hand side. Question goes on the left-hand side, answer goes on the right-hand side. Use the answer bank once again to determine which word best completes the sentence. I'm going to go ahead and move on while you write this. Please pause it now. Okay, so earthquakes. All right, earthquakes. Well, we're lucky. In California, we are riddled with earthquakes. Earthquakes happen most, okay, in areas of active faulting, like the San Andreas Fault here that comes up through California. But notice, there's a lot of other faults, major faults, okay? And all these faults are areas of earthquake activity. So the San Andreas Fault is the plate boundary between the Pacific Plate and North American Plate. Over here we have the Pacific, North American Plate, and over here the Pacific Plate. Okay. So notice, though, there's other faults. The San Andreas Fault is the main fault where most earthquakes kind of happen. But there's a lot of other faults throughout California. And up where we live, we live near the Maloney's Fault. So there is earthquake activity up here. So... The map to the left shows earthquake activity within the last week. Okay, So you can see there's a lot of earthquake activity. The second map here is an earthquake hazard map. The red areas illustrate the most shaking, or the areas that received the most earthquakes. Okay, As you can see here, the coast province is really receives a lot of earthquake. This red area, we're pretty good. We're over here in the green area. So or relatively safe, so don't let someone try to sell you earthquake insurance. Okay, so where do earthquakes occur? Question on the left hand side, answer on the right hand side. Use the answer bank to determine which words best complete the sentence. Go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. Okay, tsunamis. Well, as you might have guessed it, okay, let me go back any place near the coast. So that includes the coastal range, the transverse range, and the peninsular ranges are the areas that receive tsunamis. You may have even seen this sign, okay, if you live near the coast. 
It says in case of the tsunami, head to high ground and you better run because tsunamis, if it's a strong tsunami, it will ravage the coastline. Okay? So the transverse range and peninsular range and the coast range receive tsunamis. Okay? The 1964 Alaskan earthquake sent a tsunami down California's coastline. Crescent City was hit the hardest. And the 2011 Japan earthquake created a tsunami that struck California again. Once again, Santa Cruz and Crescent City were hit the hardest. Okay, so it caused damage. An earthquake across, all the way across the Pacific Ocean sent a tsunami that did, enough, that did millions of dollars of damage to California here. Okay, so question, where do tsunamis occur? On the left-hand side is your question. Your answer goes over here. Use the answer bank to determine which word best completes the sentence. Okay, go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. All right, so landslides. Well, landslides occur where there's a lot of rain, right? This creates loose soil and rock that slides downhill. You don't get a lot of landslides in the flat areas. So you could expect landslides to occur in places with lots of rainfall. And once again, the coastal range gets a lot of this stuff. Okay? So floods. Floods and landslides occur in, excuse me, floods occur in low-lying provinces. Where is all that rain going to go? All that rain's going to go to the flat areas. It's going to flow downhill and... And the flat areas are places like the Ket, the Central Valley here, which is pretty much where we live. So we live in a, a relatively flat area, okay? And all that rain and snow is going to melt. And all that rain and snow is going to go somewhere. It's going to flow down the rivers. And we have a threat, a flood threat, where we live here in the Roseville area, okay? So the Great Valley is subjected to floods. So is the Roseville area. We get floods because all that rain and snow is going to melt. It's going to flow downhill to, and if there's a lot of rain and there's enough snow melt, our area could become flooded. Okay? So floods occur in the low-lying provinces like the Great Valley here. Okay? All right. So where do floods and landslides occur? Okay. Question on the left-hand side. Answer on the right-hand side. Use the answer bank to determine which words best completes the sentence. And go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. All right. Volcanoes. I wasn't lying when I told you California gets a lot of earthquake activity and volcanic activity. We get it all here in California. We get earthquakes, volcanoes, tsunamis. Lucky us, right? So active volcanoes, such as Lassen here in Mount Shasta, occur in the Cascade Range, okay, or province. These volcanoes form by two converging plates, okay. The San Andreas Fault goes out to sea right around here, and off the coast of Northern California, there's a plate being subducted or pushed underneath the North American plate. This subduction zone creates volcanoes at the surface, above the subduction zone, so it Here's Lassen and here's Mount Shasta. It formed above a subduction zone. And if you recall from our unit on volcanoes and plate tectonics, this is the Cascade Range. Okay, and if you recall, this little plate here is being pushed off the coast, being pushed under the North American plate, okay, off the coast of California. And as it's pushed under the North American plate, it melts, okay, due to the friction and the high temperatures cause rock to melt. And that melting plate has magma and hot magma rises to form volcanoes. In this case, Mount Shasta and Mount Lawson here in California. Okay. So, there you have it. Well, luckily, because of these volcanic areas, we get what's called geothermal energy. Geothermal is great energy. And we utilize this geothermal energy to power our homes and businesses. So, what is geothermal Well, energy? Well, it's clean energy. It's heat from inside the earth. We tap into the, to the magma or the heat inside the earth that's underneath the volcanoes, if you can think about it that way. Okay, and we use that heat to get energy. Okay, it's renewable. It doesn't run out. And the great thing about it as well is it doesn't pollute our air and water. Okay, it's a clean source of energy that is renewable. It won't run out. So, that's geothermal energy. Notice... We have some geothermal plants here and here, up by the volcanoes here, okay, and over here.
So these geothermal plants produce clean, renewable energy for the state of California. We want to use more, okay, because it's clean and it doesn't pollute our air. All right, so where do volcanoes occur is your question for your notes. And the answer is below here. Once again, as always, use the answer bank to determine which word best completes the sentence. Okay, go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. Okay, I believe the last thing we're going to talk about, there may be one more, is rainfall. Okay, oh, and we're going to talk about the California aqueduct system. Well, if you look at the map, which parts of California receive the most rain? Which parts of California receive the least rain? Well, Calif Southern California is pretty much a, de a desert, okay? Northern California provinces receive much more rainfall. We get way more rain up in here, up here in Northern California. So, like I said, most of Southern California provinces are classified as deserts. So down here, you pretty much get deserts, not a lot of rainfall. Okay, so, but the thing is, most people, most of California's population lives in Southern California. Los Angeles, San Diego. Okay, these are huge cities, and they need water to live. People need water to live. With little rivers or little rainfall, and the, you're living in a desert, where do the people get their water from? Well, the answer is the California aqueduct system. These blue lines represent man-made canals or aqueducts okay, that distribute water, that bring water down to Cal Southern California. Okay? So, the aqueduct system delivers water from Northern California system to Southern California, okay? So, these blue lines are very important. They're like, they're like the lifeline for Southern California. Without them, they would have no water, okay? But there's an issue to be learned here, okay? Here's a pictures of the aqueduct system. You may have seen them while driving, okay? They go right along I-5 here. Let me go back for a second. There's an issue at hand here, though, because the northern California rivers receive little water anymore. They're, southern California is taking most of northern California's water, so which is starving our northern California for fresh water. The fish in the California are having a hard time to survive, and not only that, northern California farmers are having a hard time because of their water. So where in the future as our population grows there's an issue there's where is where are we going to start getting all this fresh water okay so there's a water shortage in the state of california and it's only going to get worse okay something your generation is going to have to contend to as you get older all right so what part of california receives the most rainfall okay and Okay, question on the left-hand side, answer on the right-hand side, your answer bank. Okay, use those words to determine which word best completes the sentence. Okay, go ahead and pause it while you're right. We're going to move on. Okay, so go ahead and summarize here, please. Okay, make sure you summarize. Look back on your notes for 20 points, please. Use the answer bank. Okay, we'll see you next time. Congratulations, you're done with the mapping unit. Day three of three, get ready for that test and study your notes. We'll see you next time. Go ahead and pause this. Bye-bye.